live. Hey everybody, it's Kate Richford and it's Free Tip Friday from beachop.com. Oh my gosh, we made it through the week. It's the end of July, summer is moving right along, and so are our projects. I'm really excited to share this Free Tip Friday with you. We're going to talk about the Across Cultures and how I modified it into a necklace and talk about some really classic beadshop.com designs. Um, but I'm Kate Richberg in front of the camera and I've got Karen and Brandwin assisting me today behind the camera. How are you guys doing? Bonnie's good. good. Yeah, Bonnie's already in. She said good morning and Geeta's in. All right, we're in. That's great. Good morning, you guys. Good morning, Bonnie. Good morning, Geeta. And Deborah. And Deborah. Hello. Oh my gosh, we've got so much um, to talk about today. I am pulling up the um, blog post that I did for this project to make sure that I am getting all of my ingredients right. Um, for this list um, and we're gonna jump on in so let me take a swig of my coffee oh, and we have a hello from London hello That's Joanne is that Nash. Joanne Nash I was yeah. gonna say hello Joanne Nash from London I hope everything over there is going well today um, I have a special affinity with London. I went to school there for, as did Brandon. We both went to school, though, at separate times um, there. So I have a fond, fair fondness for South Kensington and the South Ken tube station, my home tube station there. So, um, all righty. Well, I am going to get on the other side of the table so we can just jump in and talk about this fantastic across cultures project so let's do it Karen's gonna move the camera around I'm gonna move myself around and let's get this show on the road shall we I'm gonna move my my computer so I can see my materials list and let's see what we've got going on I'm running all righty thanks Karen oh that looks great I think you guys let us know if you can see okay I'm going to roll up my sleeves here and get this show on the road. How's that across cultures in there, Care? Can you see it okay? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it looks great. Oh, good. Fantastic. So I know where I'm working. I know what I'm working with. Um, so some of you, or most of you, or all of you, um, have seen, saw my kind of fun broadcast with Grace, not this past Wednesday, but the Wednesday before. And we had a great time making our classic Across Cultures bracelet with Grace's updates, um, which was really, really fun. And um, I just thought that the designs and stuff were so cool. Um, they were really, it was a real refresh of the project for sure. Um, but it really also, uh, chatting with Janice about the Across Cultures project, you know, it really brought back to me some of the, I don't know, some of the old school ways we used to string at beadshop.com. Um, and it was really one of the first ways I learned how to string a necklace in this style. Um, way back when I started with Janice in 1992, it seems like yesterday, but... It was, I guess, <laughs> it was a while ago <laughs> that we uh, that I, I started. Um, but now that I'm back at beadshop.com, um, it's kind of fun to revisit this style. And this was a necklace that we did a lot that we strung on this Irish wax linen. Then I've got some here, and then I've got some here to show you guys, too. Here are some different colors. And this is a four-ply Irish wax linen, and it really is a fantastic stringing material to string on. And that's what I did my entire um, piece here, I did on the Irish wax linen. So I'm going to talk a little bit about using that. Um, and I think it just really adds an interesting, really a nice hand to the piece. So it's very, um, I don't know, squishy. I don't know if squishy is the right word, but it really has a nice supple feel to it, and it has everything to do with the wax linen as a stringing material that I used. The thing about the wax linen, though, you may be thinking, well, Kate, does it stretch? And the answer is, it does stretch a little bit because it's a natural fiber. 
Um, but I haven't really had much trouble with it. And if it does stretch, you can always restring later, but I haven't had things stretch so much that it needed to be restrung. Any questions so far, Care? Anything? No, just a lot Anything? of people love the Iris Wax one and they oh, love this project. Yay. And we had a hello from Pakistan, too. Oh, hello. It was, it was, no, oh, um, I, yeah, I'm right. Maraz? Yeah, Maraz, that's right, from Pakistan. <laughs> yeah. Yes, well, welcome. Yes, our seed beater friend, our very accomplished seed beater friend from Pakistan. That's awesome. Um, so let me show you guys a couple of tips on on this piece. I mean, we could spend hours and hours with it, but um, since it's Free Tip Friday, I don't have that much time. Um, but I wanted to show how this differs a little bit. Hey, Bran, you know, I should have grabbed an Across Cultures bracelet. I think there's one in Gracie's office. Okay. I just want to show how this differs. Thanks, Brandwin. Um, but let me show you one of the things that I used here to kind of add a little panache to this piece. Not that it needs panache adding, but I went in. Oh, thanks, Bran. That's perfect. Um, I added a vintage find to my piece, and I added the um, the perfect pie. But anything in our um, vintage finds collection, I think, would work well. Um, these are truly beadshop.com classics here. All of these carved serpentine pieces. Janice and I are both wild about them. I've used them for years and years, and I love how they look. So, like this carved piece that I've got here from our Vintage Finds collection, you could, you know, I'm going to bring that Vintage Finds up just so I can see what I'm telling you I'm using. Because we have so many that sometimes it just slips my mind. This one's called Puzzling right here. And you can see if I just laid that over, this would be a great one to um, to use as kind of an ending piece. I also have this, I think it's the Eternal Knot, maybe? Let me see what this one is. I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. Oh, while you're looking for that. Yeah, yeah. Someone asked, why use wax linen versus stringing wire? So that is an excellent question. Yeah, and this is the Eternal Knot. So the question was, why use the wax linen versus something like a soft flex or even like a Ceylon? And I could certainly use Ceylon. Um, Softflex, though, while I love it, notice how the knots in this piece, like I've knotted it here, you can see it here, and I've also knotted it here. Softflex doesn't knot, it crimps, right? So I would have to devise a way to crimp my pieces closed, which I could, but I feel kind of like the tribal or ethnic feel of this necklace really meshes with a more natural stringing material like this wax linen or even regular Ceylon, like so. Okay, What I really dig about this Irish wax linen, and I'll go ahead and I'll just cut, I don't know, I'll cut a piece here. The way that this portion, and you can go back and watch the Free Tip Friday, it's linked um, everything that I'm using today is linked in a blog post on our blog, so you'll see all of the materials that I've used. Um, and the Across Cultures broadcast um, is also a great way to, um, to play with this, as well as um, going to the Across Cultures handout. But you can see with wax linen, if I'm doing four strands here, I'm going to measure one, two, three four lengths, I'm a little caught up here, and then, I don't know, maybe a half a length or something for good measure, right, and I'm going to clip it. Now, the way that this piece is strung, this yellow piece with the mustard colored um, 6 aught seed beads, this is one long strand that I strung and strung and then just kind of looped together in one long double piece. Let me get it this way. So that your beads just kind of double over like this, and then you just knot everything together like so. Okay. And the 
beads that I used in this piece, you can use a wide variety of different beads. I used, um, for my main color bead, I used this mustard colored six aught. But I also pulled some of the other matte beads that I really liked with it. This terracotta, this turquoise, or this gray would really work well. Um, but any of the six aughts, you guys, will have the same effect, size effect. And then I used a, um, this is the transparent saffron. I'll pull a few out. You can see here in the necklace that there are a few of those transparent saffron that um, act as just kind of a little accent bead. And I think that these transparent saffron actually work with the terracotta, the blue um, turquoise, or this gray matte. I think they all work, including uh, including this this um, this mustard. So I think any of those beads will work there. I also used, you can see right in here, I used our little um, brass hishi. I have them in a couple of sizes. It's the Slice of Life Hishi. And these brass ones, you can see it's a nice, chunky bead. And I used both sizes that we carry. I think it's a six and a four. Get on there on that ball. See, like that. But we have other things. These are all from our tribal um, category. And anything in that tribal category um, will work nicely, but I think these slice of life really work nice, nicely. And then, of course, our russet sands, this um, African um, bicone bead. We have it. I have it here in copper, but it also comes uh, in a silver. Um, they're really beautiful. I just love them. So any of those, any of those will work. So that's kind of the ingredients that I used on this side. And essentially, I just strung the whole thing, one long thing and then just scooted it around in a circle and tied that knot. So, um, as we do in the regular Across Cultures bracelet, which is what Brandwin brought me, here to look at, it's on this side. It's this side of the uh, bracelet, which is this side of the necklace here. Okay. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, Kate, what? How long did you string that? Well, this section for me to 10 inches it's about nine and a half inches so nine times four 18 36 36 inches so it's about a yard of beads that I strung don't get too hung up you guys on the length because if you string a yard of this and you go oh you know you've tied it down and then you start doing this side of the necklace you can elongate things on this portion right? So this section of my necklace, it's also, it's about eight inches or so. And the way that this is done is you can see, see that loop right there? That's a loop that comes around. Then I tie a knot, hide that knot, make sure my hand's not in the way hide that knot under a big hole bead, and then I string each individual strand. And on these, I used, you know what I used, my favorite bead in the whole wide world. We're all talking right? about it already. Right? Yeah. Are you, do you guys know that already? You guys know. I just, I can't help it. You guys, look at this. Will you just look at it? Just look at it. It sounds amazing. Isn't it? Aren't they care? I know Karen loves these too. I, do. I this, I've been selling this bead for almost my whole life jewelry career and it has really stood the test of time and I love the shadows but in particular I love the brass shadows the brass shadows have no plating it's just the natural unadulterated bead what what are they saying about Silver's me brand the best. yeah Karen <laughs> likes the silver I like the brass never forget um, the shadows never forget the shadows it's really that true Trish. it's really true um, and then I used, you guys, the, the one, I'm going to have to make sure I get the right, um, I get the right uh, name of it here. I used a four millimeter um, check fire polish bead, and I used the opaque yellow copper Picasso, but you could use, as I say, any check fire polish, but I think it works across this color spectrum. 
from the terracotta to the blue to the gray. And I liked it because it was glass, but it really kind of fit in with the brass color scheme that I was using here. And I used a little bit of copper there. So don't be afraid to mix your metals. But again, on this side, what I did was I cut another length of um, waxed Irish wax linen. And I don't know, I cut maybe, let's say, I don't know, like 26 inches or 28 inches or, or so about. And then, because it's, you know, you want to make sure to have enough thread so that you're not um, having to add thread at an inopportune time. And then, of course, I just strung my little beads, string, 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 put them around my, my strands here, then tying my knot over those beads, putting that large hold bead over the knot, and then stringing each individual strand. Okay, and then you see Grace and I in the Across Cultures um, Facebook Live, we did this just the same way. Coming up here for the loop, I omitted, uh, I, or I took away two of those strands, strung, this is a double strand underneath, strung some large hold beads. In this case, I used these um, Tides Out in Kelp, it's these also African glass, recycled glass beads here, but any large bead would work. This um, large shadow would work. I put them back underneath and then I tied everything off, brought it back down and tied everything off underneath the strands here. And it goes into more detail, as I say, in that Across Cultures, um, in that Across Cultures project, the bracelet. It's done the exact same way. But again, don't fret. You can elongate or shorten your piece as you're working on this side. And what I just do, or what I did with this was, I kind of stopped, you know, after I had attached this, held it up to my neck and checked the length um, and see if it worked for me. Um, then once this section was strung, but not closed, the loop wasn't closed, then I came in and I started to kind of play around with the closure section of this. And this is really where you can get a little creative. So like I said, you could use this um, Vintage Find, this puzzle, puzzling, I think this was. Um, and all I did here was I strung a long piece with my beloved shadows around and then I just stuck it through and around again and brought it underneath here and closed it off. Now I could, since it has this little notch, I could um, have strung these two, added a bead, then added more small beads and knotted it off here. It really, it's the sky's the limit this is really one for you to kind of get get your creativity on with this. Then on this side for the button, uh, again, anything you could use. You could use like a smaller disc, you could actually use a real button, but what I used was one of these e ching coins and I wanted to show you how I added that and I'm going to add it um, to this side, to this coin or this vintage find right here. Come on, there we go. Here's my vintage find. Now I used some 1.5 millimeter distressed um, brown leather, um, distressed gray actually, not distressed brown. But you can also use, it's a great one to use the cotton cord and this is a one millimeter cotton cord that I used. So I'm just gonna cut a little bit away. And all you do is you bring it around and I can bring it around twice if I want to kind of get some extra cord in there. So see how I've got that? And since this has a little notch, maybe I'll use, let me make this even, maybe I'll use, see if I can get a russet sands through there. 
one of these russet sands has a pretty big hole. Any questions so far? A question? Mm -hmm. Did you get a question about the different colors of linen that you were using? Oh my gosh, Way yeah. So I had a whole bunch of these linens, salmon, dark olive, and I think just the, I'll tell you, I have it on here, just the chocolate. You can use those, or I also have this butterscotch. You know, use the linen that moves you, because the linen does kind of become an accent in the piece. I use the chocolate, but any of these colors I think would have looked fantastic with it. Just depends, again, on which beads you're using. Um, so, let me see if I can clear the way. Sometimes these russet sands, I'll pour these out. I have... got a few questions about your bracelet. <laughs> Oh, yeah, this? Like, oh, yeah. I'll tell you, you guys, I'll tell you the story about this bracelet at the end, okay? Because I have a story about it. I always have a story. What a surprise. There we go. Can you see how these are going together? If you have trouble with the chocolate, with the cotton, and you guys, if you haven't tried the cotton cord, try it. I love it. I'm going to angle cut this sucker and just slide slide that through. And you can cut using snips. I used our little thread snips. Or you could use, of course, you know what I love, my Zuron snips. Cut that cord really well. So see how that russet sands just sits right in there? Look at that. And you know what I'm going to do? What I like even more? This is called designing on the fly, you guys. That's what this is called. In case you hadn't noticed. That's what I have trouble with the most. Really, Karen? Well, Karen, you're a good designer. We were just taking our pictures yesterday from our tiara challenge, you guys. And wait till you see Karen's tiara. It's so amazing. You're like a regal queen, Karen, in that tiara. We're going to be showing those soon so you guys can see them. So see how I did that? I kind of had two before, but I got another round so that my cotton cord is coming up from the middle there. Now let me put this russet sands back on. Let me see if I can find the one that had the big hole. Let's see if I can get these through. You can also stiffen these up with a little bit of hypo cement, right? Because the ends get a little spongy spongy. Kimberly was asking if you could put a shadow in first and then a russet sands. Yeah, you can do Kimberly World is your oyster. You bet. I thought about putting um, a, um, a shadow in because when in doubt in my book, add a shadow, right? There it comes. Have you guys gotten your beading all? Did, did those of you who watch Free Tip Friday and made that order, I hope that you got your, your free all. If you didn't get one, they are on our website. This one's giving me a little sass, isn't it? Let me... Let me show this cord who's in charge right here. Me. I'm in charge, cord. At least I think I'm in charge. Maybe I'm not in charge today. Let me pull this back out. See what? See, it's, see how that cord is just not minding its own business? Let's cut that one more time so it's not so spongy. You know what? Let's get a russet sand that actually has a hole that's big enough. I've noticed that sometimes the russet sands have that leftover cloth. They do, Karen, and that's a really great observation because I think this is one of them. And, of course, I can't leave well enough alone. I always have to fuss. But what Karen's talking about is, see this russet sands? Can you see right in that hole? There's a little bit. They come on like a cotton cord. So if you pull out the cotton cord and free, clear out that hole, that could be part of the issue. And I think, Karen, that's much clearer right there. Same one with this one that I was using. But I love these russet sands. These, we used to call them the African pagoda bead, too. They're um, a beautiful bead. Let's see, there's one. Let me see if I can get this other one through. But again, you could stiffen this cord using, um, using your hypo cement. There we go. Maybe. Come through. There we go. 
the DAW, a little bit of determination, and the right tool. There we go. And I think that looks a lot better with three. I thought three, two looked a little too skinny. Then I'm just going to, like I did here with this one, I'm going to tie a knot so that the I Ching coin has something to sit up against. I'm getting dangerously low on cord here, so always cut a lot of cord so that you're not going, oh my gosh, I'm running out of cord. Now this, you can see in the one millimeter, how the knot is a little bit smaller and the knot here is a little bit larger. Well, I happen to have right at my fingertips, I could use anything, but I'm going to use these tides out because they're sitting here. This will help uh, keep my I Ching, uh, I Ching coin in place. A little flat saucer bead I think is a great way to go. See that, how it's going to hold it there? And I'm just going to have it sandwiched between two of those. Go on, go on, I'm in charge. I'm the boss of the cord, there we go. So see that, how it's just kind of sandwiched in there? And then, oh, with my tiny little bit of thread, it's so short. This is why you always cut more cord than you need because you never know what pitfalls you're gonna encounter on your trip. That last little bit in there, you get in there. See how I'm using my bent chain nose? Bent chain nose aren't good only for wire. They're also good for grabbing cords. There we go, I'm gonna push that down. Let me get my hand out of the way so you guys can see it. I'll pull that tight. And you can see I've got a nice uh, uh, button closure here. And I would just come in, maybe I'd add a little bit of glue to that knot um, if I had my glue at the ready, but I don't even need to worry about it for now. But see how that closure would just fit just like that. So it's kind of an interesting uh, contrast between using this Perfect Pie or any of our other kind of um, vintage finds as well as this one millimeter cotton cord versus this 1.5 millimeter leather. Pretty cool. The last thing I want to show you, how are we doing on time? I don't want to go too far over, um, but I did want to show you guys how if, let's say, instead of using all of these beads here on this, or using these beads here, but instead of using these large hold beads, what you could, a kind of a good alternative you could do to that, um, and I'm gonna string these up, and I'll tell you the story, any, or any other questions, Karen, related to this, and then I'll tell you guys about my bracelets. Everyone just loves it, so they looks great. Oh, great, thanks. Vintage finds, you know, I think they're so unusual. Um, it's a real throwback for us, those guys, and I just, I love those serpentine pieces. So the bracelets I'm wearing, you guys, I don't know if you're like me, uh, me and my mom, we love vintage jewelry, and my grand did too, my little grand. We all love vintage. So I'm always on the hunt for um, kind of cool, interesting vintage pieces. So I was at the Alameda Flea Market here in Alameda, California, years ago, but if you ever come out to the San Francisco Bay Area, um, it's on the first Sunday of the month uh, out in Alameda, California, right where the Naval Base used to be, right? I think that's what used to be the Naval Base there. And it's kind of out on San Francisco Bay. It's really a beautiful, um, kind of a beautiful setting. Um, and there's a lot of vintage. They really only sell vintage stuff there. So there's a lady there who sells vintage jewelry, and she had a big, just kind of a pick-through bin of stuff, right? It's like, be still my heart, a box full of like random broken vintage jewelry. I was, couldn't have got me out of there if you tried. So this bracelet here, it's just an enameled piece with little scenes from around Paris. It was in her broken jewelry bin and a lot of the jump rings were missing, so it was kind of raggedy looking. But I saw it and I thought, oh, I must have it. So I took it home. I cleaned it all up, 
restored all of the jump rings, and so now my guess is, I don't know, you see these once in a while. It's probably from the 50s or 60s. And then she had another one. It's kind of hard to see. It's a little baby bracelet, and it says Serge. So Aww. this belonged to Petite Serge, probably. So I like to wear these two together, my little homage to Serge and my vintage, my literally vintage find um, Paris charm bracelet. So that's my little, my little story there with those. But the Alameda Flea, you guys, come on out. First Sunday of the month. It's really, really super fun. I think that's one of Grace's favorite. Favorite haunts, too. Gracie so. likes that, too. Yeah. It's really fun. If you come out, let me know. I'll go with you. Okay. I will say your jewelry today is fabulous. The whole, oh, thanks. The whole thing. The whole thing, which everybody can't see. Well, but can. I'm also wearing, and you guys have seen this. And Gita, you yeah. sent us your version of this also using uh, the called pie, um, the called pie piece. I think it's, I have that in a free tip Friday or on a Facebook Live or something. We've I got think I this list. starting to make yeah, that somewhere. Like, Can we see the finished yeah, thing? Yeah, <laughs> the finished thing. So it was pretty fun. It's my Christmas necklace from last year based on our born yesterday piece. Mm -hmm. But I want to show you guys just real quick so that you don't forget. Um, and it would be this closure, and this will be, this is where we'll wrap it. So instead of using large hold beads like this, you guys, one of my favorite things to do, and you see me do it all the time, but I'm going to do it again, is the silk wrap. And closing this off with a silk wrap, I think, would be a great way, um, a great way to go. And all you would do is, like all of my strands would be down here, and let's just kind of mock that up. So you've got a couple of strands here that are coming up, and then you've got, you know, you've got your loop, you've strung your loop, and so all of your strands are coming together, okay? And what I would do is I'd just get all of this tight together, and I'd silk wrap this one, I guess, with Ceylon, though you could silk wrap it with Chinese knotting cord, whatever worked for you. And we've got a great tutorial on... Um, silk wrapping in our um, builders. Yeah, skill builders, right, Karen? Where you can download it and get a little more info. But let's just say that you've left a little bit of space there and you've got all your strands here. And all you would need to do, you guys, is just silk wrap. You just start by making a loop, and I'm having this loop kind of go towards um, where the loop is up here. And I just start to wrap around on its own. It's kind of, I should have gotten a thread that was a little more contrasty here. But I'm just going to wrap all the way up to where the bottom of that bead loop is. And sometimes I silk wrap this whole loop. I'll show you that sometime. That's a real classic. To close up the silk wrap, I just put the end through that loop, and where the thread is coming out from underneath the wrapping on the opposite side, I just pull, and I hold this tight with my thumb so I can feel that little knot slide underneath there. I pull both ends tight, then no glue or anything needed, you guys. I can just come in, clip that away, and then I clip all this away, and it's tight and caught underneath that wrap. Now this would also be super, you could just, you know, you could do this in the beginning and then start stringing from here. You know, this closure has a world of possibilities as well. But I wanted to show you a little variation between using beads to close and a silk wrap to close. And you've seen this variation here with the cotton to close that versus this um, leather to close this up. So that's a little bit of an overview of my Across Cultures necklace. Um, I hope it inspired you to do some cool things with it. But really, you guys, you can't go wrong download that um, Across Cultures handout, take a look at the Across Cultures Facebook Live where Gracie and I did the piece, and essentially all you do is elongate 
the neck the bracelet to become a necklace throw in some of your own personalized touches your own personalized beads and you're going to uh, be in great shape any final questions care yes maureen wants to know are the threads um like chinese knot and cord resistant to dirt to dirt okay um is there a way to help them stay clean if not have you ever tried spraying them with that three millimeter fabric protector oh the 3m 3m yeah. so you know what Ma is it maureen maureen please sir. hey maureen so i would say no i have i've actually never worried about getting these threads dirty they are waxed, so they do resist dirt some because of the wax coating. But also, I think kind of we call that kind of the gentle patina of the life of the piece um, is going to make a little bit of a difference as the piece is being worn. But that's why with this Irish wax linen, I keep it for things that have kind of that ethnic or tribal feel because it does kind of fall into the spirit of the piece. I think spraying it with like the 3M, like the Scotch Guard or whatever, I don't think that's going to do much for it. Though you can try it. I don't think it would hurt it, but I don't think it would particularly help it either, um, honestly. Um, I think that was the whole question. Was that the whole question? I hope I answered the whole question there. Okay. Well, if that's it, I guess, I don't know, Karen, do you want to pull up the... I've got maybe a couple of final words. Should I go around to the yeah, other side? Sure. I'll do that. And then we can sign off for the weekend. As I come on around. Oh, everyone's saying thank you for the great ideas. Oh, you're welcome. It's my play. It was really fun. I'm going to put this one on, shall I? Just for fun. There we go. And I like the closure being seen, you know. It's kind of fun. There we go. You can wear it on the side. You can wear this in the front or the mustard part in the front. You can layer it. It's nice off to the side. Off the to the side. Piece, yeah. yeah, right here. Is it too much if I layer? Is this one too many layers? <laughs> well, well, you, you know. Nice <laughs> That's right. We love to layer. Gracie and I love to layer. Um, so if you guys, just as a reminder, if you go to our blog, um, our blog is called The Bead Table. Everything is listed there that I used for this necklace. Um, so it's really quick and easy for you to reference. They're all hot links, so you can find them all here. Um, and that's on our blog, beadshop.com, uh, the bead table. Um, and we also, just as a, I want to remind you just really quick, um, if you go to beadshop.com, one of the ways that you can find all of the seed beads, if you go to our Japanese seed beads, our seed beads um, category, go ahead and search by six aught, and all of those six aughts, there we go, all of our six aughts come up. Okay, so that's a great way to kind of find your main color and then kind of go from there. Well, I'm super excited to uh, hear what you guys do with this project. I hope that you'll have fun with it. Also, if you have not um, uh, opened your newsletter yet today, I recommend that you do. Um, we've got a really great, I'm going to pull mine up here so I can, I can see it. Bethany says hello to Karen. Hi, Bethany. Am I going to see you at uh, Beadfest Philly, I hope? Right? I'm waiting for her response. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure she, I'm, I hope, I think you're teaching out there, Bethany, I think is what you're doing. I like Art's comment to tell you when you, before you leave the house, to make sure you add a layer. That's right. <laughs> add a layer. Thank you, Art. <laughs> that is very, it is very true. Bethany said yes, ma'am. Oh, Great. Great, great. Yeah, we'll have more info, you guys, um, about our meet and greet that's coming up at Bead Fest. Uh, Janice and I will be there in Bead Fest Philly. So five classes. Bethany's five yeah. classes. You've got one class more than me. Good work, girl. Good work. Yeah, classes are filling up. It's going to be really, really fun. And Janice and I have some special, um, some special uh, 
little things coming up for you at the Bead Fest meet and greet and more info on that will be coming because Bead Fest it's like in two weeks or three weeks or I can't even think I'm not I'm so not ready I'm so not packed but if you guys have gotten your newsletter and opened it up uh, all weekend for our newsletter subscribers we're having a special coupon code and that coupon code is hot 20 and when you make your order and you put hot 20 in the coupon box you'll get 20% off your entire order so that goes through actually Monday Monday the 31st of July and if you haven't signed up for our newsletter it's really really easy you go to beadshop.com go to the newsletter it's a little newsletter thing right on the right hand side right hand side yes and you put in your email um, and we put you on our email list rest assured that all of your info stays private with us we don't give it loan it or sell it so anything you get from signing up on our list will only be from us so I guess that's it the good care yeah Tammy said that she'll help you pack just let her know I know Tammy <laughs> I owe you uh, I you're next on my list to actually message because you and me lady right there <laughs> packing up that stuff um, well thanks you guys have a fantastic creative weekend um, go out there enjoy the sunshine make something great um, and Wednesday Grace and I are gonna be on Facebook live we're gonna the theme is summertime blues and I know you're intrigued so stay tuned for that all right thanks Brandwin and Karen you did great camera work thank you so much since Grace is taking a little well-deserved day day off today so have a great weekend everybody feedshop.com Kate Richburg we'll see you soon bye-bye